LDV. Shitbox or not? That's next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where straight new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. If you're in the market for a new vehicle, emerging brands like LDV offer a compelling rock bottom price and it can be hard to look away, right? Especially if this is a business decision, if the budget's tight and if you've got your economic rationalism hat on. But what is LDV exactly? And seeing as price is not the only component in the whole value equation, should you even consider buying LDV? Going to try and get to the bottom of that over the next few minutes so that you can make an informed choice. This segment was inspired by you. At least it was inspired by you if your name is Dominic and you are an upcoming florist from... Mooney Ponds in Victoria. We need a flower delivery van. I have no idea what to buy. I expect that we will do quite a few kilometres, 25,000 to 30,000 a year. Light loads, because flowers are not that heavy. We will need a tow bar. White is probably the best colour as it keeps the flowers coolest while doing multiple deliveries. (laughs) Definitely not black. My preference is two sliding doors on each side with one window on the passenger side sliding door. This is a work van, so suitability, safety, reliability, economy, warranty and low upfront cost are more important than bells and whistles. Very happy to receive your recommendation. Might make a good video. Especially keen to hear your views on the LDV because it is so cheap. Okay, so here in Shitsville, LDV is imported by the Atico Group, which is relatively unknown publicly, but well known in the automotive game. Atico has runs on the board importing small emerging brands into Australia, but Frankly, it's not renowned for world-class customer support, so that's bad. I'm talking about dealership technical training here, spare parts, inventories, and that bend-over-backwards attitude, or not, towards making things right for you, should you have a problem. So that would be strike one for me on buying an LDV. Atico imports Maserati, Ram and LDV in Ars trailer, plus Alfa Romeo, Jeep, Fiat, Ram and Maserati in New Zealand and Maserati in South Africa. So there's that. LDV offers the D97 seat SUV, the T60 Ute, the G80 and G10 vans and the G10 people mover and the prices are compelling. For example, the entry G10 van is $25,990 drive away. That is from their website today. The base model Hyundai iLoad, which is itself a bit of a high ace up ender, at least it was when it lobbed, is $42,987, also from their website today. That's drive away. The LDV G10 van in poverty spec, therefore, is an incredible 17 grand cheaper. And that's an immense bottom line price difference, I'd suggest, compared with buying the iLoad, and that's provided everything else is equal, which it may not be. Despite the scorching prices, okay, LDV sold just 6,000 vehicles last year in Australia, and part of that is down to their anorexic inventory, but they are in some big segments like seven-seat SUVs and dual-cab utes. You know, it's very hard to achieve critical mass if you are an automotive brand here in Schittsville and all you sell is 6,000 cars. It's hard to get the dealer network motivated. It's hard to get a bunch of technicians trained up on your specific stuff. And it's hard to have a big fat warehouse full of parts for people who might need them. They could also go belly up as a brand, right? And They could also be a resale disaster, the latter of which is certainly going to offset the upfront saving to some unknowable degree. There's no data available on this, right, because the G10 van was not released until 2018. 
And I don't want to imply here that these things are being hammered together by peasants in the middle of a rice paddy out of some old aluminium cans and leftover Leyland engines, because that's simply not the case, right? LDV is a division of SAIC, the Shanghai Automobile and Industrial Corporation, which makes about 6 million vehicles annually. And you can't make 6 million vehicles without state-of-the-art technology. But I guess it's safe to say that they're probably not Toyota in terms of the quality target or Mazda in terms of the R&D, at least not yet and not for several years. SAIC are also in bed with General Motors and Volkswagen, and I'm not sure that's a plus, given the underlying ethical landscape in both bedfellows' boardrooms. According to Forbes, uh, SAIC is the 10th most powerful automotive conglomerate in the world. The name itself, LDV, originated from Leyland Daff Vans, and it kicked off in 1993. Started along for 15 years, and then the Russians ended up owning it, and the GFC hit. Yes. The British government tried to resurrect LDV, or at least save it several times, but it went into administration again, and the Chinese picked up the IP in 2010. So the kindest I can be on this is that they know a thing or three about building light commercials because they've been doing it for a quarter of a century or something. But I would not generally look to the Brits or the Comité de Cosodast Venoy Bezopesnosti as beacons of automotive excellence. Going Chinese is almost definitely a step forwards here, right? That's the corporate history lesson, okay? But now, let us talk about you, the potential customer. How do you make a call on this? Do I buy it or not? I mean, there's no real in-service evidence, is there? The price is unbeatable, but on the risk management side of the equation, the viability of many a fledgling small business, right? It depends on the ongoing serviceability of the vehicle. It's a bit of a bastard if you're a florist and you cannot deliver those flowers, or if you're a builder or something and you can't get the tradies and their tools on site. Being off the road for, I don't know, three weeks or three months is going to put a dent in the bottom line. You'll have to rent or buy a replacement vehicle, and there might not be the funds to actually do that. So I think the conservative choice here is the iLoad. It's available in numerous configurations, it's quite comfortable to drive, and it's been in the market for ages, and it's well regarded and reasonably reliable and it's got a longer warranty, but it's heaps more expensive. The van is a tool of the trade, basically, right? And I was at Bunnings the other day, oddly enough, and amazingly, in the tool shop section, department, whatever, you can actually buy a four-inch angle grinder for 35 bucks. A Zito or some brand like that. I can't remember the brand, just the price, 35 bucks. But I don't see too many hardcore tradies using those 35 buck angle grinders on site. I guess you could look at it another way. How many 35 buck angle grinders do you have to kill before you've paid more than the cost of one Bosch or AEG angle grinder, which is presumably going to last a lot longer? And where exactly is the point of equivalence? If it costs you less than 17 grand for let's call them vehicular contingency expenses, renting a van or whatever, and both of those vehicles do an approximately equivalent job in the context of your balance sheet, then LDV is going to win, yeah? This choice is simply risk management versus cost saving up front. More than anything else, these are the warring factors at play. LDV is cheaper and riskier. In a way, this is a lot simpler than buying a cheap car. At least with a van, you're usually not making a personal statement about who you are. With a car, you're almost certainly also labelling yourself a cheapskate if you go with the cheaper option. So there's that, and everyone knows. Hopefully, at least now, you can weigh it all up and make more of an informed choice. Thanks for watching. <laughs>